As a massive Nintendo fan, I've picked out five of the best boss fights throughout their history. I won't be including final or secret bosses because while all of these picks are sort of light spoilers for their respective games, I want to avoid completely ruining a game for someone who hasn't played it yet. Also, final bosses tend to be some of the best fights, so this list might have been full of final bosses, which would have taken away the spotlight from some of the earlier but still great bosses included here. Here's five more under the radar our picks that I wanted to draw attention to. Let's kick off the list with the first top tier Nintendo boss, taking it back to 2007 with the first grand star boss of Super Mario Galaxy, Megaleg. The thing about Megaleg is, his fight is pretty easy and very short, especially if it's not your first time playing a Mario Galaxy game. The goal is to run around and lead the bullet bills that track Mario in such a way that they break the protective casing that hides his weak point. In typical Mario fashion, it's a very simple idea that leads to a fun, elegant fight. Despite the short length and simplicity, there are two things that really impress me about Megaleg the sheer size and scale of the fight, and the way it's presented. It takes just one look at the footage I'm showing here to realize Megaleg is huge. You take advantage of Galaxy's unique gravity-defying platforming to walk up the sides of his legs, over the spinning gears on his shoulders and up to the top of his head, essentially turning the boss's body into a platforming stage. And the fact that Megaleg, such a giant boss, is fought on a planet that's tiny in comparison just adds to this fight's awe inspiring scale. A fight like Megaleg, and really the Mario Galaxy game in general, was mind-blowing in 2007, and is still, even to this day, an impressive sight to behold. While we will talk about bosses from some newer games later in the video, let's go even further back in time and talk about a game from 2002. One of my absolute favorites, this is the creepy boss Nightmare from Metroid Fusion on the Game Boy Advance. It's really not the gameplay or boss fight design that makes Nightmare special. You just kind of dodge as best as you can while you shoot his weak point with missiles. Instead, it's the spectacle of it all. As you go, Nightmare's face becomes more and more of a monstrosity city becoming a mess of leaky green slime, dripping down his face like tears as you can see his mouth constantly gasping. You almost, almost feel bad for it as you mess up its already messed up face with each incoming missile. It's gruesome, kinda terrifying, and an absolute thrill. And what's really unbelievable is when you realize that this game was made two decades ago, and you're getting this sort of visceral reaction from a Game Boy Advance game. It's a boss that's left an impression on me ever since the first time I played it as a kid, and I think it's an absolutely iconic boss in Nintendo history. Both bosses I've talked about so far are so memorable because they're a spectacle, a sight to behold. And this next fight is no different. Taking it back to a game that's a bit more modern, I want to shout out the final encounter with John from the first Bayonetta game. John shows up a few times during the course of the story, each time building up to this final encounter. She's very much Bayonetta's counterpart, a fellow Umbra witch, and this seems to be exactly what it takes to match Bayonetta. Over the course of the game, we fight some giant crazy monsters, but the foe that gave me the most trouble was the one that matched me step for step. This is a frantic, high-octane duel taking place atop a skyscraper, and the edge-of-your-seat insanity of it all absolutely translates. John is unforgiving, at times prompting a button-match quick-time event that if you fail, pretty much will always lead to a game over. A strong memory for me about this fight is actually needing to hit the switch home button to pause and rest my hands before I match the button for these. I'm a decent masher, but seriously, I needed it. These button checks are that fast, and combined with the already fast nature of the fight, it was tough. The combination of the visual spectacle, the intensity, and the character development payoff surrounding this fight all combines for what I think is one of the greatest Nintendo boss fights of all time. Next, we're getting really recent and talking about a boss from The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. So light spoiler warning if you haven't got to it yet. This game has some great bosses, but I have to give a special nod to the boss of the Wind Temple, Kalgera. This instantly became one of my favorite bosses in all of Zelda, just because of the feelings I felt during it. 
While by this point I was fairly used to gliding through the skies, I didn't expect there to be a boss fight that took advantage of this map's unprecedented verticality quite like Kolgara did. This is a giant flying spider and you're fighting it way way up, meaning you don't touch the ground the entire time. I've never played another game where you can fly like this, and taking the winds up above Kolgara only to dive bomb down and crash through its weak points was something completely new for me. For me, it's the truly outstanding boss of Tears of the Kingdom, and one I'll never forget fighting for the first time. I was standing up like a foot away from the TV because I was so jacked up about what was going on on screen. And to cap it all off, the music for this boss is just perfect, suitable for the eye of the storm we're fighting in, and pulling in those hard-hitting notes of Rito Village slash Dragon Roost Island. And finally, at number 5 is Medusa from Kid Icarus Uprising on Nintendo 3DS. This fight owns a permanent space in my head simply for just how bad it faked me out the first time. I guess spoiler warning, but this game's over 10 years old. Once you win, a credit sequence starts playing, only to be interrupted by the main villain we're introduced to next, Hades. It's wonderfully, memorably done with full voice acting, and it leads you into the remainder of the game, which is way longer than I expected. The fake out is what caused me to write this fight down as one of the first as I was brainstorming for the video. But then, as I replayed this mission recently, it actually hit me that this entire sequence is amazing, not just the fight. The whole lead up to Medusa is a three pronged dungeon, as we refight previous bosses on each path. It really helps to build up to the encounter with who you think at the time is the main big bad of the game. The fight with Medusa herself is good, and it has a really great scale to it, especially for a 3DS game. Actually, the whole thing looks amazing for a 3DS game. But I think it's the lead up around it, how everything is so grand, epic, and final boss worthy, that is why the fake out is so good and hits so hard. It's in my opinion an unforgettable boss fight in Nintendo history, and the whole thing wrapped up makes it absolutely worthy of this list. So those are the first five non-final bosses that really stuck out to me. However, there are many many more and I could probably fill out a couple more videos worth of great Nintendo bosses. Maybe even a definitive ranking of my favorites. But until then, if you like this video, then check out this one here where I count down my 25 favorite Nintendo Switch games. And definitely let me know your favorite Nintendo bosses down in the comments below. Thanks for watching as always and I'll see you in the next one.